Tablighi Jamaat is a Sunni Muslim missionary movement that began in India in 1927. Less than a century old, the group now has tens of millions of adherents in more than 150 countries. Tablighi Jamaat specializes in two things, spreading Islam and spreading coronavirus. Despite warnings about the spread of coronavirus, 16,000 members of Tablighi Jamaat attended a four-day event in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, February 27th through March 1st. The New York Times reported on March 20th, The faithful prayed by the thousands, hands and faces washed at communal taps to signify their purity. They crowded around platters on the floor, scooping up coconut rice with their right hands in the traditional way. And they slept in the mosque or in tents set up in the religious compound, rows of pilgrims from nearly 30 countries gathered in Malaysia for spiritual renewal. Three weeks later, participants in the 16,000-strong gathering of the world's biggest Islamic missionary movement had spread the coronavirus to half a dozen nations, creating the largest known viral vector in Southeast Asia. More than 620 people connected to the four-day conclave have tested positive in Malaysia, prompting the country to seal its borders until the end of the month. Most of the 73 coronavirus cases in Brunei are tied to the gathering, as are 10 cases in Thailand. At least three coronavirus deaths have been linked to the event. We talked about religious concepts and our faith in God, not the coronavirus, said El Matli, a Cambodian seller of used phones who participated in the conclave. Keep in mind, this article is from weeks ago. Many more people have now been infected as a result of Tablighi Jamaat's coronavirus infection celebration in Malaysia. After returning home, Mr. El Matli and 22 other Cambodian pilgrims tested positive. Two of their wives are also sick. The outbreak underscores how the pandemic's momentum has moved beyond China, where the virus emerged. And it has thrown a spotlight on Tablighi Jamaat, a century-old missionary movement whose wandering bands of preachers depend on the charity of mosques to shelter them. None of us have a fear of corona, said one of them, Roni Arif, the head of a community health center. This guy's the head of a community health center in Mamuju, Sulawesi. We are afraid of God. On March 2nd, Indonesia, the world's fourth most populous nation, had only two confirmed coronavirus cases. As of Friday, that figure had risen to 369, with 32 deaths. A cabinet minister is among those who have tested positive. All sickness and all health is from God, said Mr. Roney, who is employed on the local level by the Ministry of Health. Whatever happens to us is God's will. Whatever happens to us is God's will. Well, it's apparently Allah's will that Tablighi Jamaat spreads coronavirus all over the planet, because that's what the organization is doing. On March 11th, more than 150,000 members assembled on the outskirts of Lahore, Pakistan, for a three-day event. Authorities shut the event down the next day, but the damage had been done. The New York Times reported on March 26th, a gathering of more than 150,000 people was held this month on the outskirts of Lahore by Tablighi Jamaat, one of the world's largest proselytizing groups. The event was eventually called off at the urging of officials, but the participants had already come, sleeping and eating in close quarters. The gathering proved a perfect transmission point, infecting indeterminate numbers of Pakistanis, at least two Kyrgyz citizens, and two Palestinians who flew home and introduced the virus to the Gaza Strip. A similar gathering of Tablighi Jamaat in Malaysia infected more than 620 participants who then returned to half a dozen countries across Southeast Asia. Notice, as Muslim preachers in Gaza were proclaiming that coronavirus is a soldier of Allah and insisting that Muslims were protected from coronavirus, members of Tablighi Jamaat were bringing coronavirus to Gaza. Even after Tablighi Jamaat spread coronavirus to numerous countries during the first half of March, Organizers scheduled another international gathering in Indonesia for March 18th. Authorities demanded the event be canceled, and the organizers finally complied, but only after thousands of Muslims had again assembled. This brings us to India. The Washington Post reports, The devotees came by the thousands from all corners of India and beyond, converging on a large white complex in a crowded quarter of Delhi to share a message of piety. 
When they left in the first weeks of March, they unknowingly carried the coronavirus with them. Gatherings last month at the headquarters of a prominent Muslim missionary group are emerging as India's first super spreader event, complicating efforts to control rising infections in this nation of 1.3 billion people. More than 400 confirmed cases and at least 10 deaths across the country, stretching from Tamil Nadu in the south to Kashmir in the north, have been linked to people who attended events at the Tablighi Jamaat Center near a historic shrine in India's capital. The infections, which represent about a fifth of India's total cases, have sparked a frantic effort to track down anyone who attended the recent meetings. In at least two states, potential contacts are being traced using mobile phone location data. This article is three days old. Yesterday's figures suggest that around 30% of coronavirus infections in India can be traced back to Tablighi Jamaat. The activities of Tablighi Jamaat have emerged as a particularly potent vehicle for transmitting the virus. Founded in India nearly a century ago, the group has as many as 80 million adherents worldwide. It is built around small bands of itinerant missionaries who urge fellow Muslims to deepen their observance and model their lives directly on the ways of the Prophet Muhammad. The group eschews politics and, in theory, operates without formal record-keeping, said Barbara Metcalf, a prominent historian of South Asian Islam. It stresses proselytizing and travel, producing a state of vulnerability and uncertainty in which one learns to be dependent on God, Metcalf wrote. Notice this group focuses on going out into the world and preaching and then gathering together for events. Going out into the world and then gathering together for events. Going out into the world and then gathering together for events. That is a recipe for spreading a disease like coronavirus. That's why Tablighi Jamaat is being called a super spreader. The Tablighi Jamaat cases in India may be linked to another religious gathering held by the same group in Malaysia. At the end of February, 16,000 people from numerous countries attended a multi-day Tablighi Jamaat event at a mosque in Kuala Lumpur. That gathering was the source of hundreds of coronavirus cases in Malaysia and dozens more in Brunei, Cambodia, Singapore, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. Cases have also emerged at a Tablighi center in Pakistan. By early March, missionaries from several Southeast Asian countries were in India. Nearly all of them passed through the bustling complex in Delhi's storied Nizamuddin district and then traveled on to different parts of India. Several of them later died, including a Filipino man and six Indonesians. One Indian who went home to Kashmir after participating in a three-day event at the Delhi center also died. More recently, according to India's health ministry, more than a thousand cases of coronavirus across 17 states have been linked to Tablighi Jamaat. Many members of the group are now complying with quarantines, but many are causing problems. In India, quarantined members of Tablighi Jamaat were reportedly harassing nurses and spitting on doctors. Female medical workers are now barred from working around Tablighi Jamaat members in certain areas. Fortunately, most of the group seems to be realizing that this isn't working out for them and that they need to do what they're told. But my goodness, look how much damage one religious movement did in a single month. If you're watching this video and you know someone from Tablighi Jamaat, please share this video with him or her because I'd like to address the group directly here. I'll try to be as gentle as possible considering how many countries are now battling coronavirus thanks to the followers of this movement. Here goes. Tablighi Jamaat. There were already a lot of people, especially in India, who didn't like you. Why in the name of common sense would you give them more reasons not to like you? I know you have tremendous faith in the most obvious false prophet in history. As we all know, your fake prophet said that there's no such thing as a contagious disease. Your fake prophet said that your fake God has already decided whether you're going to get a disease or not, so it doesn't matter what you do. Your fake prophet said that Muslims who die of plague are martyrs. Over the past month, you've seen some of the results of your obedience to your fake prophet. Members of your own group are dying specifically because they trusted Muhammad's false claims. 
Your prophet's a fake, a fraud, a phony, an imposter, a pretender, a sham. Stop trusting the claims of an illiterate 7th century caravan robber. If you can't trust your prophet to guide you away from a contagious disease, why would you trust him to guide you away from hell? If you can't trust your prophet to lead you to the truth about coronavirus, why would you trust him to lead you to paradise? Obviously, I can't stop you from believing in Muhammad if you're hell-bent on believing his stupid, stupid claims. But as long as the rest of us can see the fruit that grows out of belief in your fake prophet, you have lost the right to be taken seriously. Good luck with your missionary outreach now that your utter contempt for the safety and well-being of the entire world is on full display.